Hey y'all, well we're back to more DIY speaker stuff. And I showed you the start of this build on this three-way swan. It's on Amazon. I think this is a 3.1, yeah, 3.1A. And previously we had done the two-way speaker. And I think I told you how lovely this speaker sounds. Even just using the stock crossover components, it's got nice bass. It's got really nice bass, actually. And for rear ported speaker, you know, as long as you get it away from the wall or whatever so it can actually reflect the bass, this thing really rock and rolls. Soft dome tweeter has got a nice sound to it. It's a little more chill than my Eclipse RP600M while still having a really bright, tingly kind of top end that, you know, it does all the right stuff. Now, certain kind of music, I'll still say I like my clips a little better. And then other kind of music, I like these. So it's nice to have something to swap out and get a little different sound every once in a while and have some speakers to rotate into the system just to get a little, you know, fresh sound every once in a while. The other thing that I haven't talked about was I did an upgrade to the RP600Ms on the channel, put some Mundorf coupling caps in them, the aluminum oil, and even after running them for a couple of weeks, just, I don't know, there was something about them that was, it helped the detail for sure. They definitely had a cleaner sound than the orange drop looking caps that came in the speaker, but they were a, a little fatiguing. And especially when I would swap back to these, go back and forth, I remembered the difference between the two and it almost made the difference bigger between the two, if that makes sense. So I talked to some folks, a couple of people recommended that I try some Janssen Superior Z cap, the red ones, you know, big, film, wrap, camp, whatever, looks kind of like a MyFlex cap, and got a pair of those, soldered them in, they're a little bigger, so kind of to move some stuff around, and then I also was told to test the electrolytic cap that was in the crossover, because some of them in those clip speakers were way out of spec, and I honestly now believe that that cap being out of spec may be why when some people test the RP600Ms, they find this giant hole in the mid-range, which I'm not hearing in mine, because I don't hear that listening to these that, you know, measure that don't have that. And I really do get, need to get some speaker measuring gear. So, so you can put in the comments some things that I should maybe look at. I don't want to spend a fortune, but, you know, I got the audio analyzer suite for my amps, but I don't really have anything to measure the frequency coming out of the speakers. So that would be cool. So anyway, um, I put those Jansen caps in. Definitely took the edge off of the tweeter. And it was a much improvement it kept the detail that the Mundorf cap had but it kind of just rounded off the brittleness of the sharpness that I was hearing with that aluminum oil cap and I still like that quality in a coupling cap inside of a tube amp but I'm not sure that those are actually good for speaker crossovers or at least you know in that clips application so, wanted to follow up on that, but back to these speakers. These sounded so good, I wanted to build a pair of these. And again, this is the Swan three-way speaker. It's got a ribbon tweeter. It's got a kind of funky mid-range. It's almost like a giant soft dome kind of mid-range thing, which I really thought was interesting. And then it's got a similar driver to this speaker as far as size. Now, I will say that I actually think that these have a higher quality woofer driver than these speakers do. And I'll get into the sound comparison in a minute. But they've got a, a bigger magnet. They've got a bigger voice coil. They just seem like a higher quality 
driver than these are. But this little mid-range guy is magic. I guess being a dome, it removes that directional kind of quality that the mid-range of a lot of speakers have. It just it kind of radiates this 120 degree character, you know, partially because it protrudes out, and so does the little dome that's on it. And man, for like saxophone, that kind of music, it just sounds amazing. Now, we'll admit, my age, I don't have a lot of super high frequency hearing left, which I think looking at the demographics, which I don't know if y'all know this, but you know, YouTube creators, we can see the demographics of our viewers. Most of you guys are at least in your 50s, if not older, and probably don't have fantastic top end hearing either. So you're probably just gonna catch the last little bit of range between these two. But I can definitely hear a nice sparkle on the top end of these that does kind of go past what this one does with having the extra driver. And on assembling these cases, very similar the way I did it. I put some wood blocks in the corner to kind of support the 45 degrees while I'm clamping it. And then I clamp it together in sections. I know some people do like the masking tape method friend of mine built some of the two-way ones doing that but I like doing it with clamps I feel like I can get better pressure on the wood I make sure that they're all squared up once you get kind of this first stage glued up the rest of it just kind of falls together and then on these I decided to leave square edges where this one I rounded it off with a, a pretty deep round bit I think it's a half inch and on these, because the speakers come closer to the edges, I decided to round this a little less and just on this one edge, and I left the rest of them sharp corners, and I think I did a little better job assembling these so I didn't feel the need to round these off. This one, there was some kind of sloppy joints, so it was like, hey, let's just round it all off. And then on this one, I went with the textured black Krylon paint, which I think gave it a cool look. And then, and then here's what the back of it looks like. You got a nice size base port. You got our little speaker connectors down here. And I did the same thing here where I just used one pair of these and I show how I connect the speaker wires on this on the other, you know, build video. And thanks to you viewer that pointed out that I put those in upside down on the other speaker build. They should be facing up so that the banana plugs don't fall out. So anyway, what you're probably wondering is, what do these two sound like? And I want to still give this one a little bit of a break. And I'm probably going to do more of a final review after these have some more time on them. Because I've probably got about 100 hours on these pair of speakers. And these probably still only have about six or eight hours. But as I recall, these haven't changed a whole lot. They've mellowed a little bit, but they had great bass right out of the box. And these just don't seem to have the bass response that these do, even though these are larger cabinets and whatever. And I kind of attribute it to the drivers I don't think are quite what these are so there may be some upgrade path on these to upgrade the woofer drivers that may be something i'm going to look into because otherwise i really like the way these perform the other thing that i played with was the crossovers in these there is a website i'll put the link in the description that kind of goes through what they did to the crossover. And I can't remember the guy's name off the head. I'll put it right up here. He was saying that they're too hot on the top end. And so I bought some Mills resistors to replace like the little cement ones these come with. And I decided to build one speaker with the factory crossover and one speaker with the modified crossover 
that basically has, instead of a 1.5 ohm resistor on the tweeter, it puts a 6 ohm. And then instead of a 1 ohm on the mid-range, it puts a 2 ohm. And then in the woofer crossover, instead of a 1 ohm, it's got a 2 ohm. And I think mainly what they were trying to do was just tamp down the tweeter a little bit. And so I listened to the stock one, listened to the modified crossover. He was right. The stock one is a little too hot on the top end. And so I would highly recommend replacing those resistors with the ones recommended at this site as far as an upgrade. So again, I want to give these some more time, see if these woofers will loosen up, see if these will you know, get some more bass. But to me, of the three speakers I own, this has got the least bass. Next is the RP600Ms, and then these have the most. So there we go. Another little speaker combo change. And it may be a good thing to have a speaker with a little less bass if you've got some music that you feel like the bass is maybe EQ'd a little too hot. Because when you've got a tube amp like I have, I don't like using an equalizer. I've tried them, and I really feel like it's just putting like a veil over the music. And whenever I would click it out of the system, it just sounded better. And I've tried three different equalizers. You know, one that I had from a long time ago. I tried the 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 shit audio one. I can't remember what they call theirs, but it didn't sound really any better than that old one for the 1980s. And then a friend of mine had uh, a really nice preamp, pretty high end. Was I think it was about a $3,500 preamp that had tone controls, and I thought it sounded better with the tone control switched out of the circuit. He did too. Once we you know, sat down and listened to it. So um, I would rather do tone controls with tube rolling and or swapping speakers out. And so that's another reason to have different speakers that you can hook in your system to maybe fine-tune the listening experience for certain kinds of music and certain types of recordings or masterings or whatever that you can make it sound its best. So anyway, we may be seeing more of this guy in the future. Probably going to do some research on a possible upgrade to the woofer. I think with this mid-range, we can probably go with a woofer that maybe doesn't go up as high and it really emphasizes the bottom end punch. And if you got some suggestion, I know some of you guys know a whole lot more about speakers than I do. I'm just kind of tiptoeing into the water. People are saying, you know, the water's fine, come on in. So, hey, I'm trying to come on in. So if y'all can give me some suggestions or you guys that really good at researching this stuff, maybe give me some suggestions. You know, as long as they're not crazy expensive, I'm happy to, you know, buy a couple of woofer drivers for the, a pair of these and try to get some more bottom end out of them. Because I don't really like using a powered sub unless I have to. And I think with these, you would almost have to. With these, there's no need. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed this DIY speaker segment. I'm trying to venture off into a little bit of different stuff than just tube gear. I've had fun building these things. They're kind of a combination of you guys. That maybe you aren't you know, really great at metalworking fabrication. Maybe you're good at woodworking. Or you feel more comfortable doing woodworking stuff. And these speaker kits are a great way to start. And they're... Nice that the cabinets are designed to work with everything all together. And so you're not just guessing and putting together some boxes and stuff and then being super disappointed. And when I say these things are light on the base, they're not bad. I mean, they're not just doing, you know, an honest comparison between these and these. Maybe when these get 100 hours on them, they'll loosen up and sound like rock stars like these do. But for now, I still think these two-way ones win maybe we can DIY these and make them even better. So if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. We're getting close to 10K subs, which will be awesome. And thanks to you Patreon folks. Also thanks to you folks that make donations to the website that help me afford buying these kits and projects and stuff to make content for you. So till the next video, have a nice day.